This will be a restart here, but this is going to be the start of the high school, the Gary Wilson High School girls 5K race. As we were talking earlier, we have a couple favorites here. One of them is Lake Braddock, Lake Braddock of Virginia, Kate Murphy. She's the Pan American 1500 champ. She's run 416 in that event, and she was also 24th in NXN last year. So she's got the track speed and the uh, the cross country credentials to go with it. But uh, can't forget about Emily Covert. She's only a ninth grader, just a freshman, but she was third in this race a year ago. So already has the experience in the big girl race, and uh, now she's just a freshman. But what can she do here? Can she get her first victory in her freshman year? So we will wait and see. Something interesting about Kate Murphy, you know, she, she comes from Virginia, but the fact that she traveled all the way to Minneapolis to run in the Roy Griak Invitational shows just how competitive this these races are on the high school level yeah no it really does and the the, the uh, generally you find success when you win these races and so uh, okay you see the start here we have an athlete out very quickly like we had in the men's race which in the in the boys race excuse me that went very well for Mr. Garrick Bilic, who ended up being our champion. So let's see if we'll have that same result. But out very, very quickly uh, is one of our athletes. So we're going to toss it up to a map just to show you where we're off on the course early on at this portion of the race. Covert. Covert making a <laughs> statement very, very early on in this race. So here we, you know, I think we've shown last race that was a really good circle this is about where we're at early on in the course they're going to wrap around to this right side over here as they head over to the kilometer which of course is right there so about in this middle portion a long straight away but they get some downhill and that's where some separation can really start to happen when they before they start to even get early on into the uh early portion but uh so Early on, it's all about getting out and uh, making sure that you're executing your race strategies. We're going to see our leaders right now. We have two ladies up front. We're starting to break away from the field here. So Covert out front. And Grace Ping. Oh, actually, uh, a parent came up to me before this race and told me to watch out for her. She is oh. in seventh grade. Oh my goodness. Seventh grade, and I I think he, if I'm not mistaken, he told me that she either goes to the same high school or is in the same uh, conference as um, Colorado's coach, Heather Burroughs, who held oh. the course record um, of a race that she had just run. Um, I believe in the Minnesota area, I'm, okay. I'm assuming. Uh, but he told me to look out for her. She's young, but she's a fierce competitor. Grace Ping, remember the name. Uh, will do, and we're watching her uh, her early success in her career here at Griak. She's just a seventh grader. That, I seventh mean, grade was a long time ago for me, and I was not running this fast. So I uh, applaud her for getting out. These high school girls, or excuse me, these middle school girls in Minnesota know how to get it done. Not scared at all of these girls that are five six years older than them i mean i ran cross country in pe as a seventh and eighth grader mm. but i didn't even know that you could run no it wasn't an team. option for us back in the old in the good old missouri so uh yeah we're <laughs> approaching they're gonna head to the k but two ladies breaking off early and it's grace ping and uh our top returner emily covert so one of them a favorite one of them a, a little bit of a, a dark horse i would say so yeah, it's it's pretty cool to see that, you know, even with the age gap, you know, it's a big age gap between a seventh grader and a senior in high school. Oh, yeah. But these seventh graders are fearless. It doesn't matter who they're running against. And, you know, Ping is showing that today. So 317 through our opening K. So we uh, do a little math there. Let's see. So it's about, let's see, uh, 15, 16, 15. It's about 1625 pace, I believe, if my math is correct. So out pretty, pretty quick early on. Really quick early on. Let me uh, go ahead and correct myself. So two ladies up Too front. Too quick early on. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. But here's some of our pack that is going to be chasing them. 
And as they come through this area of the course, they're uh, in a minute or so, they're going to be approaching the first mile, which will be an indicator of you know what pace these ladies are are running and you know interesting to see what they start out at if it's too fast if it's too slow and and what what happens from here but this is the the first indicator of how how they're going to feel for the remainder of this race that is true <clears throat> so we're looking at an athlete early on from looks like it was See Cotter, but I, I don't see that school on my list here, so we'll have to check in who we're working with up front. So we see that field now catching up to the pack or excuse me, working their way <clears throat> through the pack and up to our leaders now. So two ladies still running together at this point. Two girls out front early. There's some of our chase pack now. They're stringing out a little bit as they catch up to our top two girls. The rest of our field now working their way through the course. It is still a warm day here in Minneapolis. There's a big chunk of the pack, but we're going to work our way back up to the leaders. And here they come. So our leader up front is our is our seventh grader that you were talking about. Grace Ping is just putting the hammer down right now. And she is the leader. And uh, I, I think it's Emily Covert there that is in second. I'm going to need to get a verification of that. But up front right now is the seventh grader, Grace Ping. Absolutely dominating. I mean, not dominating, but she's, she's leading the field and setting this pace, which is certainly impressive for someone who's, what, 13? I mean. <laughs> if that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 12 or 13, this is ridiculous. I mean, they're flying this part of the course. And uh, the the point in the course where they're, they just passed the 2K mark, going down that, that hill, that's a really, really nice way to build a gap if you're, you know, in the lead. And that's exactly what Ping is doing. She is trying to extend her lead right now. and. She'll come around a turn pretty soon where she's she's going to hit the the dreaded 3K hill. The big hill on the course is about a little over 200 meters long. It's pretty gradual. There's a plateau in the middle, but uh, by by the top of it is where the 3K mark will be. And um, that is a good indicator of how the rest of this race is going yeah. to go. It is, um, you can see it seems like Ping might have gone out too hard. She just uh, relinquished her lead. So they're heading to 3K at this point. Yeah, the lead is now swapping back and forth. I think a Minneapolis Western or Washburn athlete now moving up, and that might be Emily Covert. Now moving past her as they, they're, they're heading off to 3K, so they'll get there at about somewhere around 11 minutes. continuing to work their way through the course and we'll try to catch up with them. Soon we can ID where they're at on, on the course. Just past halfway. Lincoln, we've seen a lot of 
really exciting races today. What uh, would have been your favorite moment so far? Uh, I mean, it's no doubt, and there's really not a question. It's what Boise State did, the ladies from, uh, from Boise. <laughs> Uh, coming here, I know it's a much weaker Michigan State team than we saw last year, especially without their one of their top returners and an All-American. Um, but Boise State, 37 points. Uh, what, four in the top 10, five in the top 20, 22? And uh, we'll catch back up to our leaders momentarily. Here they are. But, yeah, that's so far Boise State's performance. Ali Ostrander running competently up front. Um, we just kind of see what they're made of to show that they're not – you know, they're not scared of anybody, even the defending champ. So awesome race out of them. So back up front, Grace Ping has reassumed the lead. That's Emily Covert there, given pursuit, very close. This is our 3K hill. So here they come to 3,000 meters, and it's going to be quick. This is very, very quick. And uh, about 10.25 on the clock through 3,000 meters is, is no slouch of a pace. It's very nice. Very, very good pace that, that Ping and Covert have set. And, uh, you know, as you can see, they've, they've definitely established themselves as, as early leaders. But, um, you know, there's, there's a sizable top ten pack behind them that is just trying to hold on, trying to, um, you know, take advantage of, of this hill that, you know, separates uh, the tough runners from or the runners that aren't very good at hills. <laughs> and I, I, I think I've <clears throat> made a mistake here. The, the, the girl in second, Judy Pendergrast, is, is, let's just say she's not a slouch. Uh, U.S. number one right now in the country for three miles, 16-18. So uh, are we looking at a couple of superstars up front? Uh, we apologize for the confusion there. But uh, Pendergrast is, is in orange, giving pursuit. She's run 16-18 for three miles, which is tops in the country this year, and a seventh grader right now is taking it to her. This is ridiculous. I was a little nervous about Ping heading up that 3K hill, but man. She's handling it right now, yeah. no doubt about it. <clears throat> so it is Ping and Pendergrass doing battle right now. And uh, so they're working their way. They'll make a turn and wrap up, go to the 4K marker. Just about, just about six, six and a half minutes left to run on this course. And these two ladies, Ping has not shown any fear by just setting the pace and Pendergrass happy to follow. That, that, that could be good things for the, the more experienced Pendergrass who uh, is, is chasing. However, it looks like a little bit of gap is forming. And this is one, one of the rare points in the course where good amount of spectators can can gather as there's a little bit of over overlap but uh, but not much as you know this this course at Roy Griak is very very unique in that it's not loops it, it hardly crosses the same pla place twice and uh, makes it very interesting for these ladies it does All right, so you see some of our athletes in the back. Now we're going to give you an idea what, where we're at in our map with our leaders. They're heading to three, 4K, excuse me. So this is about our area of the course that we're seeing them work through right now. The heart of the course heading to 3,000 meters, or excuse me, 4,000 meters. Uh, it's getting to be tough parts of this course. Obviously, Pendergrass and Ping navigating it better than anyone else at this moment. But no, the, the thing with the 5K course that you don't have, or that you do have with the, uh, excuse me, what you don't have on the 5K course that you have on some of the other courses is some of these tighter turns and uh, what you would think of as switchbacks. So they don't have those here, which it makes life a little bit easier um, as they're going to head to the very top of this map for 4K, and they will wrap all the way around here and come to the finish line, which is, of course, here. Oh, that's a good one. They couldn't even correct that. So that's where <laughs> we're obviously finishing. This is where we are at here. And uh, so this is where they're running, and uh, I've made a complete mess of this. But <laughs> you see where we're working through the heart of the course, and uh, we are going to catch back up with our leaders very shortly. Here's our lead cart now. <clears throat> this is a pivotal point in this race. We've had two ladies going head to head. Qu crucial questions about to be answered: Is Pendergrass has she just been trailing Ping just to kind of? gauge her and make her do all the work or is she starting to drop off the pace last check-in she was dropping off the pace and uh 
as we check in on the screen, I, I, I think I'm getting my answer here as Ping now has opened up a 15 to 20 meter gap at 14 and a half minutes into this race. So we got about four minutes left in this one. And at this point, it looks like it's all Grace Ping, the seventh grader, going to take the title here. What a performance. I mean, this is stunning. I mean, it's not over is, yet, but. This is unbelievable. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Somebody, it's, it's, it's crazy that someone said, hey, watch out for her. And it turns out she's going to probably going to be our winner here so I know so wrapping up to our 4,000 meter point uh, very shortly they should be hitting that split at this moment as we see the beautiful Ballstead course so we're over at this point of the course now and uh, working our way to the top and then they'll just have one last straightaway before wrapping to the big long final straightaway of this course and to our finish and that final K is uh you know, most most of it, other than that that sharp right turn, is just one long straightaway. It's you know runners getting tired at that point and trying to trying to see the finish as hard as they can. But absolutely, um, you know, it's it's important at at that point to really just stay focused. Know that you know you that you can't have any regrets at, at that point. You just got to go for it. Yep, and uh, so soon enough we'll catch back up with Grace Ping and up to the lead. Let's see if Pendergrass, who is no slouch, we're talking about one of the better high school runners in the country right now, getting uh, getting beaten by uh, a seventh grader and uh, possibly one of the best uh, future future studs here in Grace Ping. And you know, as we we've seen all day in all of these really uh, deep and interesting races, uh, the Roy Grieck Invitational does a great job of putting on uh, exciting competitive races at all levels between Division Three, Division Two, II, Division One, and high school levels. I mean, it's uh, it's definitely a special meet, and um, we're very happy to, to be a part of it and get to see all this action. Absolutely. And here, back to our leaders. Uh, there's our lead cart. We're going to see where we can see the ladies now. But I do want to say our second place athlete, Pendergrass, is a senior. She was ninth in the Illinois State Meet a year ago. She is the 3200 champion, and she's getting, once again, I hesitate to say, but she's getting beat by a seventh grader. And, uh, this is no slouch. <coughs> Judy Pendergrass, one of the better runners in the country. She's a senior, an 18, 17 or 18 year old getting beat by a 12 year old. So uh, this is absolutely a stunning performance. Grace Ping is going to be your champion. It's just a formality at this point as she wraps up the hill. Time's not going to be incredibly fast, but it doesn't matter. It's all about beating this field. and cross country, time doesn't matter at all. And this is a story here, a seventh grader winning. This isn't the maroon race, folks. This is the big the big girl, the, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the gold race. I mean, this is where some studs are supposed to be winning. Seniors and juniors are supposed to be winning this race. Seventh grader, so here she comes down the hill. Now Pendergrass is starting to put in a little bit of a late charge at this point. Let's see if Ping is going to have enough real estate. It looks like she will. Grace Ping, folks, is going to be your winner. She's in seventh grade. Seventh grade. This is truly special to see. Seventh grader, she's 13 years old, Grace Ping. Remember that name, folks. Wow, what a, what a finish. She beats a senior. And uh, here's our third place finisher. 18-10 unofficially for wow. our race winner, Grace Pink, seventh grade. That is just absolutely ridiculous. So the rest of our finishers now starting to trickle in. Nice little battles at the finish line, which you love to see. What a performance, though, by Grace King. 